You're welcome to Grizzly Tales for Gruesome Kids. A series of cautionary tales for lovers of squeam. I call this tale Tom Time because Tom's time was always one hour behind the rest of the world. This made him late for school, late for lunch, uh, I haven't kept you waiting, have I? Late, in fact, for life. The theory was that Tom's brain fell out in a zoo and was accidentally replaced by a sloth. Mama! because being on time was far too much of an effort for him. And being late gave him more time to sleep. Just going to my bedroom for a lie down. Supper's in five minutes. I'll be there. But he never was. Here I am. Oh. Hello, Mum. Hello, Dad. When's supper? Tomorrow, Tom. We ate tonight's an hour ago. Oh, just going to my bedroom for a lie down. Maybe, said his father, he needs to take up boxing. That's all about timing. Ding, ding. Seconds out. Maybe you should have a lie down too. Uh, maybe I should. I could do with one. Ding, ding. Lights out. Wait. <laughs> what? Tom, stop! Look, the news! Scientists have just released the following warning. <clears throat> Don't just stand there! Can't you see? We're all going to die! We're all going to die! <laughs> I'm sorry. We seem to have the wrong report there. Let's go live instead to the government spokesman for national disasters. <clears throat> Just stand there! Can't you see? We're all going to die! We're all going to die! Ah! Right, so it's down to me to tell you. At midday tomorrow, the world is going to end. A big explosion, apparently. Kaboom, then blotto. Space shuttles will be leaving for the moon at 11 a.m. There's room on board for every human being and every animal on the planet. Don't be late. That is the end of this new... Gosh, the end of the world. Ding, ding, last round. Did you hear what she said, Tom? Don't be late. For what? Weren't you listening? I was having a little snooze. Tomorrow morning, we have to be on a space shuttle by 11 o'clock sharp, or it will leave for the moon without us. Well, that was easier said than done. Tom had never been anything less than one hour late for everything in his life. He'd have to get up one hour earlier. So, his mum reset every alarm clock in the house, rigged the car horn, overrode the lighting circuit, preset the television, radio and stereo to come on at full volume, fed the birds with early bird worm biscuits, hired a small brass band and a cannon, and organised for Concord to be taken out of mothballs and flown past the house at six o'clock precisely. But Tom slept right through. He woke up an hour late to find his bedroom upside down. Have I slept through a hurricane? We're leaving for the moon today. I'm trying to pack. The moon? <laughs> Don't you remember anything, Tom? You're my mum. It's the end of the world! Oh, come on, it's not that bad. I mean, you can be a bit naggy, but most of the time you're all right. No! Today is the end of the world. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Don't have to get up for a bit, then. But he did have to get up. The shuttle leaves in two hours. And it won't wait. Ding, ding. All aboard, please. 
Now, you'd have thought that the imminent explosion of the planet might have sharpened Tom's mind. It didn't matter how urgently his parents called him, he was always an hour behind. Breakfast is on the table. Just getting up. Time to finish packing. Just brushing my teeth. Taxi's here for the shuttle. Just getting dressed. Taxi's still here for the shuttle. All right, keep your hair on. Just having breakfast first. There's no time for breakfast. But you always said that breakfast was the most important meal of the day. Not when the taxi's waiting. And this is the most important day in the history of the human race. So breakfast must be more important than ever today. I don't have time for an argument, Tom. The taxi has other people to take to the shuttle. It's not my fault if it's early. It's not early. You're an hour late. But I'm hungry. Then you should have got up in time for breakfast. I'm only hungry because my mother didn't cook me supper last night. <gasps> because you were an hour late. Ding, ding. The cab driver says he can't wait. Either we go now or we don't go at all. We're coming. Can I bring my toast? No. Leave the toast, Tom. The world is about to explode. But I've got it out the packet now. Seems a waste. Right, that's it. I'm going. You can make your own way to the moon. Hang on, Mum. Wait, Mum. Oh, you're still here. Of course we're still here. I really thought you'd gone without me. No, just get into the car. There's just one thing I need to know first. What? What is it? Where's the marmalade? What? What did I say? Tom had less than an hour to get himself to the space shuttle. So, he finished his breakfast, read a comic, played a game of Alien Apocalypse, changed his socks, gelled his hair, squeezed a spot, had a think, pumped up the tyres on his bicycle and left for the shuttle with 15 seconds to spare. He cycled as fast as he could, but the shuttle blasted off exactly one hour before Tom arrived at the airport. The only human being left on Earth, Tom stood at the gates and stared at the empty launch pad. He was late again. Not for the end of the world, though. He was on time for that. At 12 p.m. precisely, the world ceased to exist. Not Tom, though. Strangely, he survived, trapped in a bubble of Tom time that allowed him to float around in space for exactly 59 minutes and 59 seconds, when, precisely one hour later than the rest of the world, he exploded! <laughs>